So for the first 50 years of the 20th century, until about 1950, most Americans died of infectious diseases. Well, all of that has changed dramatically, and now 80 to 85% of Americans die from chronic diseases. So the older conceptualizations about how we should approach in public health dealing with particularly preventing disease need to change as well. And Dr. Frieden has done that with his new framework, a, a framework for public health practice focusing on public health policy. Welcome to Public Health 700, Module 5, Chronic Disease. So today we're going to talk about Thomas Frieden. So you might ask, who is Thomas Frieden? Well, Thomas Frieden is the current director of the CDC. Uh, before that, he was the health director for the city of New York. And so everything has changed about public health once Dr. Frieden became the CDC director. And so today's lecture is about the health impact pyramid, a framework for public health action. Dr. Frieden's five-tier pyramid best describes the impact of different types of public health interventions. It provides a framework to improve health. At the base of this pyramid, indicating interventions with the greatest potential impact are efforts to address socioeconomic determinants of health. However, these are very difficult and politically hard to implement. In ascending order are interventions that change the context in order to make individuals' default decisions healthy. Now that's what we're going to focus on in this session, but ascending order are clinical interventions that require limited contact but confer long-term protection, ongoing clinical care and health education and counseling. Interventions focusing on the lower levels of the pyramid tend to be more effective because they reach broader segments of society and require less individual effort. The second tier of the pyramid, where we're going to focus, represents interventions that change the environmental context to make healthy options the default choice regardless of education, income, service provision, or other social factors. The defining characteristic of this tier of intervention is that individuals would have to expend significant effort not to benefit from them. For example, fluoridated water, which is difficult to avoid when it's the public supply, not only improves individual health by reducing tooth decay, but also provides economic benefits by reducing health spending and productivity losses. In countries without either adequate natural or added fluoridation, health authorities are limited to counseling interventions, such as encouraging tooth brushing. Probably public health's greatest contribution has been clean water, Worldwide, imagine where we would be without clean water. And sometimes here in the U.S. we take this for granted. Consider clean food. So you have to expend considerable effort to avoid a buying approved, USDA approved foods such as meats and vegetables. Now you could grow your own or you could go out and slaughter an animal and, and prepare it yourself, but most of us don't have time or energy to do that. So it takes a, quite a bit of effort to avoid or, or not to take the default route, which is to go to the store and buy safe foods. Modern diets contain many times the minimum daily requirement of sodium, mostly from packaged or processed foods and restaurant meals, making it difficult for individuals to control their intake. 
Reducing dietary sodium can reduce hypertension at the population level. A healthier food environment can be created by decreasing salt in packaged foods. This is happening in the United Kingdom and many other parts of Europe where introduction of sodium reduction targets has decreased hypertension about 25% in the past 30 years. Other policy interventions improving cardiovascular health are changing from saturated to unsaturated cooking oils. This has been demonstrated in many countries, uh, take Mauritius for example, by eliminating artificial trans fat in foods and they have experienced a great reduction in cardiovascular disease. Designing communities to promote increased physical activity, enacting policies that encourage public transit, bicycling and walking instead of driving, and designing buildings to promote stair use are all examples of environmental policies that are very effective in reducing obesity and improving health. Context-changing interventions such as increasing tobacco taxes, establishing smoke-free workplaces, and changing the social norms regarding smoking are highly effective. Hard-hitting anti-tobacco campaigns, elimination of advertising, and promotional cues to smoke are highly effective in reducing tobacco use. Examples of context-changing laws regarding injuries would be road and vehicle design requirements to reduce crashes and protecting pedestrians and bicyclists, laws prohibiting the sale of alcohol to minors, increased alcohol price, laws prohibiting driving at even low blood alcohol levels, effectively implementing laws to mandate seat belts, and helmet use by motorcyclists and occupational safety requirements in motor vehicles, homes, and buildings. Other environmental policies are laws that require shots and immunizations prior to school and immunizations for children and infants. Taken together, environmental policies have been the greatest contribution of public health to saving lives and improving the health of the population in the last 100 years. Particularly, these environmental policies are effective in reducing injuries and chronic disease. Many countries and local jurisdictions have enacted smoke-free ordinances, one of the major contributions of public health. Laws to control access to, to guns and automatic weapons are other examples of environmental policies that are highly effective in reducing violence and violent deaths. So to prevent chronic disease and injury, social and contextual changes are more effective than almost any other intervention and probably uh, adding up all of the public health interventions that can be taken, uh, social environmental change dwarfs all of them in terms of its effectiveness. To say that social and contextual changes are more effective at, at, at improving public health is not to imply that other interventions should be ignored. For different public health problems, different interventions may be the most effective or feasible in any given context. But looking at the underlying cause of many chronic diseases, tobacco use, a physical inactivity, and poor nutrition, you can easily see that changing the environmental context to make the default behavior the easiest pathway is the most important and effective way to improve the health of the public.